Hey guys, it's Mr. Herbst here. Today's focus is going to be on transcription and translation. Now the first thing that I actually do want to focus on is this idea of what transcription is. And if you know anything about English or, or what the root word transcribe would mean, well, uh, transcribe is sort of like making a copy. You take one thing and you, you make a copy of it. You transcribe it. Um, so what is happening? Well, well, transcription is sort of where we make a copy of the DNA, only it's not exactly the same thing. Uh, we, we use this, this, uh, this new molecule called RNA, where we actually have, um, if this here is the DNA, we have a, a little segment of it that gets copied, but it doesn't get copied the exact same way as a DNA. It gets copied into what's called RNA. And why do we even bother to do that? Well, be, it happens to be because the fact that RNA can leave of the nucleus. So transcription's purpose is to create a single-stranded RNA molecule rather than a double-stranded DNA molecule. There is the genetic code within the mRNA. mRNA uh, is very similar to DNA, only the only, different, the only couple differences is that uh, it's single-stranded and can leave the nucleus. In order to take DNA and create mRNA, there are special codes used. In mRNA, three nitrogen bases together form a code. This is called a codon. And so when we have uh, three of these nitrogen bases, A, U, and G, um, it forms what's called a codon. And that codon is going to um, allow us to uh, signal for a specific amino acid in our protein. So the code is matched with an amino acid, and we'll talk about that in a minute. But hey, you might be wondering, where is this U coming from? Um, you, may, you may think back that the nitrogen bases in DNA are A, T, G, and C, right? Well, actually what happens is when we make RNA, we replace T with U. So anywhere in DNA where there was a T, it now becomes a U in RNA. Ultimately, it's very similar. It's, very, it's almost the same thing, only we just call it a, a U for uracil. Some codons code for information other than amino acids. For example, if we have a codon that is UAG, it means to stop making that protein. So whatever sequence of amino acids we have, boom, end them right there. UAG or AUG is a start codon. So that means that uh, let's start making a protein now. For every one codon, there is one amino acid. So going back here, this right here is a codon that would be found on RNA, and that codes for one specific type of amino acid. Anyway, I, I know I deleted a couple slides. I want to go into uh, translation, jump right in, save us a little bit of time. Translation, well, it's kind of like what happens if you have to translate language? You take English and turn it into Spanish, or Spanish and turn it into English. So you're taking something and turning it into something new. Um, sort of like when you put uh, toast in a toaster, or sorry, when you put bread in a toaster, it comes out as toast. You take bread, which is bread, and you put it in a toaster, and it comes out as so something new. So translation is the process of changing information from one order of nitrogen bases in, in mRNA into the order of amino acids. So we're taking those codons, and, and we're turning them into... Uh, a sequence of amino acids, which I'll abbreviate AA. And that occurs within ribosomes that are found in the cytoplasm. So now maybe it's kind of making a little bit of sense why we actually have to make RNA in the first place. And all that, that really ultimately that is because we have to be able to leave the nucleus. And so what happens is we take mRNA, which is produced directly from DNA itself. And we use these codons here. The every three is a codon. Every three nucleotides is a codon. And we translate them into an amino acid sequence. When mRNA enters the cytoplasm, so what, we, what happens is after, um, if, we say, if we say that this is our cell and we have the nucleus, we're going to get transcription occur in here. And then we're going to have the um, mRNA leave the nucleus and it's going to go out into the cytoplasm, and it's going to bind with these little dots. If you remember back from uh, our, our, cell, our cell organelle unit, those little dots are our ribosomes. And so the mRNA is going to attach to a ribosome, and we are going to, have, we're going to create a, a protein based on the message of the mRNA. 
Now, one important thing to know, I'm going to put a star next to this right here, is there are only 20 different types of amino acids. So you may be wondering, well, um, proteins are hundreds, uh, hundreds if not thousands of amino acids long. What makes a diff protein different than another protein? Well, it all is because of the fact that the order of the different amino acids makes for a different protein. Um, then, you know what, we have this other type of RNA called tRNA that actually brings the amino acids to the mRNA strand. So how does that work? Um, on the opposite side of tRNA, there is a, a amino acid set that is three nucleotides long that are, compl that are complementary to the nucleotide's codon. So this is called an anti-codon. So right here, um, this is a picture of a tRNA. It's going to carry an amino acid. So it has one of those 20 amino acids with it. And on the bottom of tRNA, there is a little anticodon. This, in this case, it's AAG. Anybody want to guess for a second what, uh, if, if we had a sequence of, of, of ribosome, if we had a, if we had a uh, mRNA right here, we had, um, if we had a type of RNA, what, what sequence of, the, of, of RNA would that anticodon bind to? Well, let's say that we had a, um, a U here, another U, and a C. Those two things complement each other because, again, the U replaces the T that's in DNA. So A binds to U, A binds to U, and G binds to C. So when a match is made, um, there is a temporary bond formed where uh, we, get, uh, we get sort of the, the tRNA and the RNA being stuck to each other. This places the amino acid in the correct position to enable it to bond to the next amino acid. So the next tRNA bonds with the codon, and then we have two amino acids binding together. The first amino acid then releases itself from the mRNA. So here's what happens: we have the we have the mRNA here, which I just which I'm underlining, which has all those codons on it, and then this tRNA comes whoop, swooping in, bringing a little bit of an amino acid, and uh, we're going to get this growing peptide chain here. So the ch peptide chain is going to get is going to grow and grow and grow. And eventually, if it's I don't know, hundreds or not, or, or not thousands long, it's eventually going to become a protein. And it'll continue until we reach a stop codon. And amino acid chains, you know, they become proteins when they are freed from the ribosome and twist and curl up. So ultimately, the, the growing peptide chain right here is going to twist and curl up and form a huge long chain of, of, of amino acids and then curl up and form a protein. So here's a picture of what's going on. We have right here our mRNA, which has all those codons on it, which is going to code for a specific tRNA right here uh, to bind to the, to the mRNA and based on the anticodon that we find right here. So that's going to, those two things are going to complement each other. And then that tRNA brings in a little amino acid, and eventually uh, that amino acid will, will, will bind to the one amino acid that's already there and we'll get this growing peptide chain. Anyway, that concludes transcription and translation. Uh, my, this, my name is Mr. Herbst. I'm signing off, folks. You all have a nice day.